I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Fatek here. Today's video will be about why you should read uh, the Red Rising Saga, or to be more precise, in today's video, it will be to talk about why you should read the first uh, Red Rising trilogy. I didn't actually plan to make this video, but ever since I finished, uh, my reread of Morning Star uh, last month, I just can't stop thinking about it. I cannot. And you know what? It's kind of weird because Red Rising Saga is my favorite sci fi series of all time. And it's kind of crazy that I still don't have any dedicated video toward Red Rising Saga or any book in the series on my YouTube channel. So I thought. Because I just finished my reread of the first trilogy, I thought I might as well do an updated review or an updated video on why you should read Red Rising trilogy. Like usual, this will be a morning star slash a series review of Red Rising trilogy. Completely spoiler free, but I need to update this review. I need to update my thoughts because Wow, this reread experience is just insane, insanely good. And I need to mention that this is an incredibly important series uh, in my life. This holds a lot of sentimental value to me and I will talk about it at the end of this video. Yeah, but first, here's my updated Morningstar review and why you should read uh, Red Rising Trilogy. Morningstar was not my favorite book in the entire series uh, back then, back when I first read the series. Back when I first finished reading Morningstar and all the books in the Red Rising Saga for the first time, I consider Morningstar to be in the number 3 spot for my favorite installment in the entire series. But now, it will have to change because Morningstar is an absolutely prime conclusion to the first trilogy in Red Rising Saga, my favorite sci-fi series of all time. I don't usually make an updated review on reread. With the exception of grammatical fixes, I tend to leave my first review on a specific book or series untouched. This way, on reread, I can look back and observe my past thoughts and reactions on the first time I read that book. And then I can compare them, but I cannot do that for this book or series. It would be an injustice. Morningstar and the first Red Rising trilogy deserves an exception. I first read Morningstar or the entirety of the first trilogy in Red Rising Saga in January 2017 within 9 days. Yes, it was a very quick and unstoppable reading experience. I just couldn't put it down. That was more than 6 years ago. Sleeping hours were sacrificed back then as it was on my second read and it was all bloody damn worth it. On my first dive, I was adamant about Golden Sun being the reigning champion of the entire series. And this notion lives after I even read uh, Iron Gold and Dark Age, the fourth and the fifth volume in Red Rising Saga. But there is a change in the equation now. On the second dive into the story of Daros and the individuals surrounding him, I am pleasantly surprised to say Morning Star is now my favorite volume in the entire Red Rising Saga series so far up to Dark Age. If you love sci-fi or you love space opera, please read Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. Red Rising was a dystopian sci-fi novel and Golden Sun is when the series started to become a space opera series. The plot in Morningstar begins a year after the traumatizing end of Golden Sun. Brown weaves an intensely unpredictable storyline through his empathizing characters, devastating betrayals, deadly political machinations, and space opera bloodbath throughout the trilogy. However, this does not mean the narrative was all battles and actions like in Golden Sun. There were solemn and slower moments to let the events and hardships the characters went through settle in. I remember the first time I read Morningstar, I was slightly disappointed with the relatively slower pacing of the novel. I mentioned I preferred the non-stop exhilaration of Golden Sun. I will have to retract the statement. Binge reading the first three books in Red Rising Saga might have led me to feel impatient to turn the page faster because I wanted to know what happened next. And I cannot deny I failed to appreciate the deep and mature themes of the series during my younger state six years ago. And now I have absorbed these emotional and resonating themes like a sponge on my second read. I thought being a man was having control, being the master and commander of your own destiny. How could any boy know that freedom is lost the moment you become a man? Things start to come, to press in, constricting slowly, inevitably creating a cage of inconvenience and duties and deadlines and failed plans and lost friends. We are humans and we are, in a way or on some level, broken with rage, sorrow, pain and regret. The first trilogy in the Red Rising Saga is supplied with war, bloodshed, sorrow and loss. 
but it never plunged into becoming a grimdark science fiction series. Pierce Brown made it clear that some of the most integral main themes of Red Rising trilogy are to gain the determination to fight what you cannot control, to overcome oppression but to never lose sight of the most precious aspects in your life. Legacy, loyalty, redemption, family, and love. These are not options, these are necessities. A driving force and strength to replenish the empty space in our hearts. Broken bonds can be mended, mistakes can be redeemed. There isn't a better way to talk about this subject rather than to let uh, Pierce Brown say it himself. Whatever you are told, being an adult doesn't mean you have control. No matter the power you have, the money you make, the age you become, we all feel a little bit at the mercy of something else. The government, banks, chance, illness, our bosses, etc. That's what Darrow is dealing with in Red Rising. The fact that any control he thinks he has over his own life is a mirage, but he does not despair. Instead, he decides to break the chains and live for more. He set us to create his own future. The fact is, we do not have complete control over our lives. Never have, never will, that's okay. The point is rather to take control over the parts of our life that we can and live those parts in precisely the way we want. That is living for more and that is what Darrow is fighting for. And personally speaking, this is why I feel like I can connect and relate strongly with Darrow's story and struggle in the trilogy. Another theme that has been there since the first book is friendship and its importance is made extravagantly evident in Morning Star. It is the core of the series. Darrow was 16 years old at the beginning of Red Rising and he is now 23 years old in Morning Star. A lot has happened since the gold came to bring him war and Darrow and many characters in the series have received substantial character development and went through life-changing events. Darrow, Severo, and Ragnar remain my favorite characters in the series, especially Darrow and Severo. I found their unbending friendship an utter delight to read. I have read more than 600 books since the first time I read Morningstar, and on this revisit, I realized extensively just how extremely well written their friendship was. Darrow and Severo are my favorite bromance or duo in speculative fiction. At the very least, it is up there with Fitz and the Fool from The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb, Royce and Hadrian from the Ryria books by Michael J. Sullivan, or Locke and Jean from The Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch, and more. But it is that good. And my vast investment in these characters, plus the addition of Brown's merciless plotting, allows me to seamlessly enter the pages of the novels and experience the terror of adversity the characters endured. Readers' emotions and investment are Brown's toys, and playing around with them is Brown's spectacular expertise. For the superbly written protagonists and antagonists, their journey finds closure here. Some will live, some will die, and that, in my opinion, is a good thing to have in stories. No matter how much I love a character, I need to feel a sense of urgency in what they are fighting for. I need to know they're not protected by the author's immortality barrier as many stories did. I need to feel that what they're fighting for could truly cost their lives, and their actions will always have repercussions, especially in a series like Red Rising Saga that deals with war, vengeance, and destruction resulting in thousands of casualties. Not all science fiction and fantasy books need to have authors killing off their characters, but in the hundreds of books that I have read, since the first time I finished Red Rising Trilogy, it is shocking how few, how relatively few authors are willing to kill off their characters. It's war, one of the most horrific acts of violence. The kindness and courage of a character shouldn't mean they're safe from death and damage. If a favorite character of mine dies in a book or stories and then I feel sad or angry about it, then that's a good thing. It means the author has succeeded in making me emotionally invested in the characters. And if this succeeds, it also launched the story toward an unpredictable path that enhanced the tension and stakes of the narrative. Some of my favorite authors of all time do this, and I am glad to include Pierce Brown on the list. He is not afraid to kill off his characters when it's necessary, and I personally assess that as a strength that every storyteller should possess. This is not exclusive to books, but to all storytelling mediums. Characterizations and character development were never neglected, and in the meantime, Brown's intricate world building and complexity improved consistently with each book in the series. New planets, cultures, rules of hierarchy, and scientific devices or weapons are established and explored in every volume and the action scenes seem to get better and better. 
in accordance with the overall quality of each book in the first trilogy. Brown excels at writing gripping action sequences. He is a bloody damn world-class talent at it. Morningstar may not be as jam-packed with actions and battles like Golden Sun, but still, every harrowing mission and battle scene matters. The final 150 pages in Morningstar were space opera warfare at its best. Right from the unquestionably epic 50 pages long Battle of Ilium, Brown's storytelling explodes with creativity and tension-packed space opera battle. The devastations and moments of ingenuity imbued into this battle were incredible. The drill of the Helldiver brought hell to the infinite landscape of space, and it doesn't stop there. The hellish heartbreaks, glory, and twists and turns inflicted by the clash of wolf's howl versus lion's roar persist until the end of the novel. Without spoilers, the climax sequence is instilled with text to conjure an electrifying adrenaline charge. The terrible calamity, burning wrath, and concluding chapters made me internally scream and want to fist palm the air. Multiple times, who will be the conqueror? Which justice will prevail? Let me do you a favor, read it and find out for yourself. But when the silence is loud and you are left staring at the void in your vision, you will know the deed of a brilliant story has been accomplished. And lastly, I should mention that my passion for this series is possible because Brown's prose clicks with me on every level. Insanely readable, tense, and yet filled with many beautiful passages to highlight. Action scenes were breathtaking and moments of magnificence were written to last. As it is now proven on my reread experience, six years since the first time I read through it, Brown's prose covered a range of emotions effectively. Poignant, poetic, dark, wrathful, savage, and yet still sprinkled with love, humor, hope, and happiness. As I said earlier, although most of Morningstar and Trilogy undoubtedly brims with postponding scenes, the scenes depicting love, family, contentment, understanding, and friendship were easily crystallized into permanence. This is what Pierce Brown does best with his storytelling skill. It's not all brutal violence and spattering crimson on the ground and space. Brown equally juggles life and death, hope and despair, love and hatred, intensity and serenity. Impeccable, vivid, and relatable prose written with an extraordinarily sharp edge that cuts at the reader's heart. It is safe to express Red Rising Saga fully satisfied my desire for a mind-blowing space opera series when I read it for the first time and it continues to do so on my reread. This is why I try to reread some of my favorite books frequently. The results can be irreplaceably rewarding. I love Morningstar on my first read, but on this second read, I feel resolute in declaring Morningstar as an astonishing space opera magnificence. Incredibly climatic, fulfilling, and loaded with relentlessly thrilling adrenaline rush and immense emotional impact. It is said that light shines brightest in the darkness, and I tell you to allow the heart and light amidst the roller coaster of mayhem in the Red Rising saga bring you that light. Containing everything I love in stories, I think Morningstar, along with Dark Forest by Chi Liu, is currently the best sci-fi novels that I have ever read. With the possibility for it to be topped by Iron Gold or Dark Age on reread, and I will begin my reread of Iron Gold uh, very soon. Or maybe the upcoming Lightbringer or Red God will actually top Morningstar. I guess we will find out. And yes, if you are here for the first time watching this without reading any books in the Red Rising saga, again, Red Rising doesn't end with a trilogy. There are still more books after the end of Morningstar. After all, the main reason why I began my reread of Red Rising Saga is in preparation for Lightbringer, which is slated to be released in July. And I am glad I enforced this decision. Morningstar and Red Rising Saga taught me to love, it taught me loyalty, it taught me endurance, and it taught me to live for more. And as I said earlier in the beginning of this video, without this series, I wouldn't have met some of my closest friends who became my co-bloggers in Novel Notions. We are constantly talking with each other for like uh, seven years now, or s six years now. But yeah, we became close because we did a buddy read of uh, Red Rising Saga. The first trilogy, back then Iron Gold wasn't released yet. And without the first Red Rising trilogy and Iron Gold, I probably wouldn't have uh, gotten married yet. Because without this series, I wouldn't have any topic to talk about with my wife because we have very different genres of books. The only similarities of genres of books that we actually read together is sci-fi and maybe some uh, fantasy books. But yeah, my point stands, Red Rising Saga holds a lot of sentimental value uh, for me on top of it being the best 
sci-fi series that I have ever read so far. I have no idea whether there will be a sci-fi series to top Red Rising Saga for me or not in the future. I will find out for sure because there are still many sci-fi series that I want to read. But yeah, it will be hard to beat and I am confident in saying that Red Rising Saga or at least the first trilogy because we don't know what will happen in Lightbringer and Red God. But I'm confident as well that they will be amazing. But yeah, I think Red Rising Trilogy or Red Rising Saga will become a classic science fiction series in the future. Per Aspera at Astra Howlers. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my updated thoughts on Morningstar and the first Red Rising Trilogy. As I said, I will begin my reread of Iron Gold soon. But I think this just goes to show just how beneficial and powerful a reread can be. If you have read Red Rising Saga or the first Red Rising trilogy, do let me know your thoughts on it. Do you love them? Do you consider it uh, your favorite sci-fi series of all time just like I do? And also, are you waiting for the release of Lightbringer and Red God? As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.